Hi everyone, my name is Rupert Goff and it's been a busy month for February for mortgage news. Let's get into it. Started with a jump in interest rates, NZ moved first, pushing the one year rate up to 3.85%. And uh, BNZ followed two days later. Other banks soon followed, course ranging from 3.79% to 3.85% for one year. At the other end of the fixed term rates, the five year term is sitting around 4.95% to 5.25%. And that's a premium of 1.1 to 1.5% to lock in a five year rate. The mortgage interest rate rise came as it became inevitable the official cash rate or OCR for New Zealand was going to increase on the 23rd of February 2022 announcement. What wasn't clear beforehand was whether the increase would be the standard 0.25% increase or a double hike of 0.5%. In the end, the Reserve Bank only raised the OCR 0.25% for a new rate of 1%. It's been three months since the last OCR rise and the Reserve Bank is coming under additional pressure to deal with a 6% inflation rate, a three decade record high and well above the bank's target inflation range of zero to 3%. In its announcement, the RBNZ stated that it's now forecasting the OCR to peak at 3.25% by 2024, up from its previous forecast of 2.5%. It wasn't all bad news though. One bank made an adjustment to what constitutes a luxury property around the country in light of last year's capital gains. This is important because banks lend less on what they define to be luxury properties, typically a maximum of 70% LBR. The banks take less risk on expensive homes because essentially there are less buyers. Auckland's definition of luxury property went up from 3.2 million to 3.75 million, but most surprising was the change for Queenstown from a previous 2.2 million to meet Auckland at the 3.75 million mark. This is much more in line with the actual cost of properties in the area. Elsewhere, Christchurch's luxury property line starts at 2.5 million, New Plymouth and Rotorua both on 1.6 million. In other news, the fascinating pain and gain report from CoreLogic came out. Unsurprisingly, Q4 2021 showed a lot of gain and not much pain. A very low percentage of houses were sold at a loss in the final quarter of 2021, a total of 0.7% of houses. The median resale gain for a property was $420,000, a record high. The report compares the gain to Q2 2020, the quarter before COVID hit our shores, when the median resale gain was a measly $223,000. This record amount of resale profits, 99.3%, seems to point to a very low amount of distressed sales figures as we expected from anecdotal evidence in the market. Resale profit or loss will be an interesting statistic to watch as the market switches from a seller's market to a buyer's market on the back of the triple CFA legislation. In 2011, only 80 to 85% of houses were resold for a profit, a far cry from this quarter's statistic, but not an unthinkable area for the market to dwell in again. Finally, many will be aware of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. While this is unlikely to have an immediate and direct effect on the housing market in New Zealand, or at least as much effect as things like a rising OCR and tougher lending criteria, it's worth noting that the share markets are bouncing all over the place as news is released from Russia and Ukraine. With volatility up, it's important for home buyers who are looking to buy in the next six months to consider whether they change their KiwiSaver to a conservative investment fund. While over the long term, conservative investment funds tend to return less, it does protect a first home buyer's deposit from reducing. A shortfall in KiwiSaver, of course, causes all sorts of problems when they come to purchase. If you have any questions on how you should be handling your KiwiSaver if you're buying in 2022, talk to your mortgage advisor or KiwiSaver advisor. And that wraps it up for our February summary. I'm Rupert Goff from Mortgage Lab. Thanks for watching.